Another busy day at work wrapped up. My name is May. I'm currently running three companies. Why three? Well, I lost my parents in a tragic accident right after graduating college. They had been managing one of those companies. I was planning to take over eventually, but I still felt like I had more to learn. Then grief and uncertainty hit me like a ton of bricks. Thankfully, the employees who had known me since I was a child said, We'll support you, so let's give this our best shot. That gave me the resolve to take over the family business. At first, I relied heavily on their help, but after three or four years, I could handle things on my own. The business took off, and the team grew. I went on to start a second, and then a third company, expanding our operations even more. The work got busier, every day felt fulfilling. The work helped ease the pain of losing my parents, and that's when I met Tom. Tom was a client representative. The moment I met him, I felt this is the man I'll marry. It was pure intuition. We'd only talked business a few times, but I felt that if I could build a trusting relationship with him, we'd make it through anything. He would be someone who valued our friendship and would stand by me. For some reason, I felt that way. I had never been particularly interested in romance, but the moment we met, I got it. Just like some people say you'll know when you've met your spouse, I felt destiny with Tom. From then on, we naturally started going out for meals, dating, and eventually got married. Tom understood my work commitments, and while he often had to travel abroad for his own job, I was fine with it. We called it solo assignments. One day when Tom was back in town and work had slowed down a bit, we went to a family meeting at his parents' place. Tom had lost his dad when he was young and grew up in a single-parent household. I had always imagined he must have had his share of hardships. Sonia, who would be my mother-in-law, welcomed us warmly. That day, we chatted a lot with Tom and Sonia over dinner. For the first time in a while, I felt the atmosphere of a family, and it made me slightly happy. That's when Sonia mentioned she was feeling lonely. After talking it over with Tom, we decided that I would move in with Sonia at the in-laws' house. Tom traveled for work a lot, so I thought that having family around would offer a sense of security. I later realized this was a mistake, but at the time, I was just happy to gain a family. Three months had passed since the family meeting, and Tom had another overseas business trip. I decided to move into the in-laws' house at the same time. I had talked to Sonia about my job during the family meeting, so I assumed she understood I was busy. Welcome, May. It's good to have you here. We'll take good care of each other, you, me, and Tom. Sonia greeted me warmly, and I felt a bit relieved. Having someone to call Mom again made me happy for a brief moment. But when Tom left for work, Sonia's smile vanished. She started complaining about trivial things, and it seemed like she was getting more irritable with me. I had a bad feeling, but thought, maybe Sonia is just lonely. One day swamped with work, I was in a rush to get started. Then Sonia burst into my room. May, what are you doing? Help me clean. Sonia, I have work to do now. I'll clean up later, I replied. No, it has to be now. Hurry up she shouted. Sonia's expression was different than usual. It was so cold, you wonder if she ever looked like this before. Fine, let's get it done so I can work, I thought, and helped her clean. It took about two hours, but we finished. Finally, I could work. Before I knew it, it was evening. Sonia stormed into my room again. May, how long are you going to hole up in here? Sonia, please wait. I'm in the middle of some important work. What are you talking about? You're just playing on your computer. It's not play. It's called remote work. I tried to explain. Don't give me that nonsense. You're just unemployed. I saw it on TV. She yelled. Even though she had nodded along when I talked about my work at the first family meeting, I was at a loss. She just wouldn't understand. Both Tom and I were busy, so we probably couldn't contribute much to the household chores. However, I had been contributing $5,000 a month to the in-law's house to make Sonia's life easier. That's enough to hire a housekeeper. I had left the finances up to Sonia, hoping it would make our daily lives easier. 
Sonia herself had also said she wanted to be in charge of managing the household budget. Despite this, things turned out this way. Did she want to teach me how to be a proper daughter-in-law? At that moment, I was so optimistic, not wanting to ruin my newfound family. Months later, Tom's sister, Kathy, arrived at the in-law's house. At the same time, Sonia, suspecting that I was unemployed, seemed to have reached her limit. It looked like Sonia was the one who called Kathy. As soon as Kathy entered my room, she said, So, you're the unemployed daughter-in-law, huh? Oh, not you too. I was perplexed. No, I'm not unemployed. I have a job, I responded. I didn't hold back, but what can you expect? She's Sonia's daughter. She just wouldn't listen. She's a spitting image of her mom, I thought. Ever since then, Kathy has been coming over almost every day, shouting insults like unemployed and antisocial through the door along with Sonia. It's like listening to a duet of reclusive frogs. I just chalked it up to, this must be rural San Diego. You're bound to hear some croaking frogs and let it roll off my back. It's not like I'm running three businesses for nothing. I've worked hard to develop a thick skin. I don't want to worry Tom, who's working hard overseas. I'll have a good talk with him once he's back. By the way, Kathy's already married. Her husband's a workaholic who doesn't interfere with whatever she does, or so it seems. Maybe he should start. Why is he even married to someone like this? Does he even know what's going on? But this can't go on forever. It's exhausting. I was starting to feel that way. Eventually, it seemed that my resolve was starting to annoy Sonia and Kathy. One day, Kathy started ramming my door. I told her she was going to break it, but she broke it and came in anyway. Well, she finally did it. I had the feeling their harassment had intensified. Hey, unemployment queen, mom and I are fed up. Can you please leave? Sonia beside her was nodding in agreement. When I asked what she meant by leave, she said, You barely help around the house and just stay in your room being antisocial. You're just in the way. Mom and I, her favorite, want to live here together. And Tom's okay with it, she added. Sonia, maybe feeling emboldened, said, I'd be happier that way. I found out they'd been badmouthing me to the whole family. That same night, a man named John, claiming to be a relative, showed up and started berating me. It's unbelievable that someone who's agreed to live with us is just antisocial, he screamed. He only believed what Sonia and Kathy told him. What even is this? My desire to value family was cooling, at an alarming rate. I realized there was no need to pay high living costs to stay here. Am I going to lose the family I'd gained? No, these people aren't family. Thinking this, I contacted Tom. After I told him everything, he said, There's no need to stay there anymore. Let's live together here. We can continue to do so even after my overseas assignment is over. So I immediately started the handover process at work and began packing. I couldn't wait to leave this house. The next day, I left without a word. No regrets. I couldn't care less if they struggle without me. Think about your own situation. That's what I thought to myself. Three days later, I was overseas with Tom. At first, I was a bit overwhelmed by my new environment, but I gradually got used to it and began enjoying myself. About three months after leaving, I got a message from Sonia. She's finally caught on, huh? Maybe they contacted Tom, but they seemed really angry this time. Sonia was blocked on my phone, so when they called me, it was easy to guess why. As soon as I answered, they jumped in. Hey, May, where's the money you're supposed to send? We thought you were just hiding away, but then you'd leave the house without a word. We don't need a daughter-in-law like you. Divorce Tom. Give Tom back to us. Yeah, Mom's right. We don't need an unemployed daughter-in-law who doesn't contribute. They were both yelling at me over the phone. I won't follow you anymore, I said and hung up. That's when I made up my mind. I'll expose everything, and I'll name names. Tom and I decided to go live on social media. I got contact info for Sonia, Kathy, and our relative John from Tom. Attached the live stream URL and sent. We're going live to tell you all the truth. 
felt like a YouTuber for a moment. Once we confirmed everyone had tuned in, we started the stream. Facing the camera, Tom and I began to speak. I know this is sudden, but we want to share what Sonia and Kathy have been doing to me. I run three companies, but currently work remotely. I often travel overseas for work, and since May works remotely, she hasn't been able to help around the house. To ease the burden on Mom, May has been contributing about 5000 a month to the household. The chat started buzzing at the mention of $5,000. Yet Mom and my sister took that money to splurge and hurled abuse at May. I showed evidence of the money transfers to corroborate Tom's explanation. That's the whole truth. We've tried explaining to Sonia and Kathy, but they wouldn't listen. They even told me to divorce Tom. This is the reality. We're ending the live stream now. We then ended the stream. I heard later that a massive brawl broke out at the in-laws' house after the stream. Quite a tragic scene, apparently. Sonia and others had been borrowing money from relatives because what I gave wasn't enough. Relatives who got mad, hearing my story, were making a fuss, demanding repayment. After a while, Sonia and Kathy, who were struggling with repayments, reached out for money. I flatly refused. Their audacity to ask for money under these circumstances made me marvel at their resilience. I was beyond baffled. I was impressed. I then blocked their numbers. After that, life went smoothly. Tom's overseas assignment ended, and he came back to the U.S., and we resumed our life together. Living in the States again after a long time, it's stress-free and comfortable. Work was progressing better than expected. When I returned, I gave all my employees gifts and treated them to a high-end restaurant. Everyone seemed genuinely happy at work. It motivated me to work even harder. I then heard from John and the other relatives who had yelled at me before. They wanted to apologize and were interested in doing business with my company. I was hesitant, but realized some relatives had valuable business connections and good business propositions. So, considering the future of my company and my staff, I decided to keep relations amicable as long as they weren't hostile. And guess what? I discovered I was pregnant. I expect the challenges of first-time parenting to be tough, but I'm determined to do my best. Fortunately, there are experienced moms among my employees. They said, Feel free to reach out anytime if you need advice. It's incredibly reassuring. Tom's also eagerly waiting for the baby. There were tough times since our marriage, moments filled with doubt, but surrounded now by people I trust and love, including my amazing husband. I realize how blessed I am. I know that, whatever comes our way, as long as I'm with Tom, we'll get through it. I hope our upcoming baby is also blessed with love and support. I often find myself rubbing my belly and saying, Don't worry, you've got Dad and Mom looking out for you.